squirrels going down a tree, cool. Look, it's, it's a popping that tree. The other come floating, you see it? It might have look. There it is. The one, do you know, the very left one? Yep. The one next to it to the right. What? Do you want the middle one? Yeah, yeah. The one to the left of it. Yeah. Wicked. Are you shot? I'm seeing it. I'm seeing one of them just have my foot up by itself. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. It's still standing up, isn't it? Yeah. No, I'm so mad at though. This is my last thing here. Do you know the very left one? Yeah. I'm aiming for it. If I hit the one behind it, I'm going to cry. Just concentrate on what you're doing. And aim for that one you want it. Exactly the same as you can't last two. Have you ready, Paul? That's it. Bakewell Beast. Ready for new season. Refilled. Had a slight improvement on opening. Made it wider, so the feed can come out a lot easier. It's looking good to me. Keep it probably three or four weeks. I've seen plenty of squirrels in the area today. I'll be back on this feeder. Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this video I'm back into woodland. Winter's fast approaching. And I'm targeting grey squirrels again. It's a different piece of woodland that I shoot and manage for landowners. Grey squirrels are out of control and they need managing in all parts of the UK. Here's my view from my eye. I'm accompanied by quite a few spiders actually in hide. Now little critters don't bother me. But you obviously got one eye on them as well. My feed is set up roughly 25 yards from my hide. Now we're in here before first light. Weather weren't too clever. It was raining quite heavy. And it made morning really gloomy. It didn't take squirrels long to make an appearance. And I think rain helped. I think they were just looking for some quick feed. Get back into the warmth and comfort of the drays. You can see. I've left ATN in 4K Pro in black and white. In night mode. Because that were a clear image. And I wouldn't have been able to see it in day mode. Because it was still really dark. Have a lovely clinical shot. First grey squirrel on deck. And it would take spoke shooting.
we're at that crossover point between autumn and winter. You'll see a lot of activity. In this uh, little video clip, you can see a rat just having a nibble on some sweet corn that's been discarded. You'll see plenty of robins, full of activity. And if you're lucky enough, you might even get to see the red squirrel. Now, for obvious reasons, we all know that grey squirrels are highly infectious to red squirrels. And we're doing his bit by controlling them and giving his native squirrels a chance to thrive. This weren't very long at all, probably 15 minutes from first squirrel arriving. And I see another visitor coming up to the feeder. It's still dark, it's still gloomy, so I've left ATM 4K in night mode still. And that enabled me to see crosshairs clearly and still take some shots. When ordinarily in day mode, you just won't be able to make it out, picture would be too grainy. It's a big advantage of having a 4K, being able to switch between day and night at press of a button. This squirrel were a bit fidgety, one of its comrades is on the floor, and I'm waiting for that perfect opportunity to take it out. I'm happy how session's going. That's two on floor already. I'm happy that, that were a clean kill. Put safety on rifle. Put it nice and comfy, awaiting any more visitors. I love to see changing seasons. Leaves turning brown, red, yellow. And carpet and woodland floor. But these are familiar visitors to any woodland in UK. They are quite elusive and you don't get to see them very often. But on occasion they will visit your feeders and it's personal preference whether or not you control them. And it's all governed by how many, how many there is and what sort of population there is in that area that you manage. Grey squirrels, on the other hand, are really abundant. I think official figures say there's around 4 million in the UK. Now, I don't know how the surveys are done, but you could quite easily double that amount. Let's say there's 8 million in the UK. So you can see, and you can do your maths and work out how significantly they outnumber red squirrel. Morning's got a bit lighter now. It's still raining, still a bit gloomy. But I've noticed some more activity. What I did have, and I had this a few times, uh, one particular squirrel kept coming to the feeder. And every time I was just about ready to take a shot, it took off. I think it run nerved because there were a few on the floor. I did go out and do a pickup. But this time I was waiting for it. It comes to the feeder, ran off, done that two or three times. So I just left rifle in position. As so soon as it sat up to feed, I was ready to take a shot. I'm really pleased that we're third squirrel at morning. This feeder, it's only early in the year. There is still plenty of natural food about, so I were really surprised to actually see them coming to the feeder as quick as they were. Like I say, I think a big part of it would rain, they will just have to a quick feed, fill the bellies up, get a bit of breakfast, disappear back into warmth and dry drays. At this time of year you're going to see loads of wildlife. 
all after natural food like acorns and beech mast and what other natural berries and fruits they can find. And what they're trying to do is build up their fat reserves ready for winter. I mean, birds like wood pigeons and pheasants go to roost. They like a full crop. And what they do is they slowly digest that food through night. And that generates heat throughout the bodies, and that's what gets them through the really harsh weather and harsh winters. If you're lucky enough in woodlands, you will come across sparrow oaks. And again, they'll be looking at building up the fat reserves and looking out for little rodents, targeted wood pigeons and other bird species as well. I'm just sat there, as you do, in your own thoughts, putting world to rights. When a flicker of grey caught my eye around basic feeder again. This was a similar pattern to the last squirrel, backwards and forwards, to the feeder. I didn't have much time. It was steady enough there, and I took a high neck shot, and that pellet was several spinal cord. And after probably 60 seconds of thrashing around, this squirrel comes to rest. After watching, I've been content that squirrel had expired quickly and humanely. The time to put the rifle down for five minutes, pour myself a nice mug of coffee, and just enjoy the magical atmosphere at woodland. Keep my eyes peeled to see what wildlife I can see, and pass away some time, and there's no better way to do it. This is just a quick round up at four squiddles that I actually shot on this morning. Slightly different format and they're going to be in slow motion. So here we go, ended up with four, just chucked, checked uh, feed level, there's only a quarter at feed left, 
So there's got to be quite a few squeals about. And they've got to have a good munch on that. It's only been filled about two weeks. Some of these squirrels are massive. This one here, it's the biggest squirrel I've ever shot. I'll try and get a better picture of it, but it's an absolute brute. It's a male one, it's not pregnant. I'm really happy with that. First session on this feeder, this autumn, come winter now, we're stepping into winter. Hopefully, sign of good things to come. This is that big one that I mentioned. Good size of bike legs. He's absolutely solid. Even eggs, heads big. Absolute brute that one. Massive. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you to everyone for continued support. If you got any questions or you just want to leave some feedback, please uh, leave me a comment or a question in the comment section of the video. I try my best to get back to everybody as soon as I can. As always, it's been a pleasure and I'll see you next one. Hey up everyone, welcome to another video. I'm guessing that you've guessed already. We're after the British turkey. Well, that's what I like to call them. Uh, more commonly known as a common pheasant. Uh, as we all know, turkeys is a tr traditional Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving dinner in USA. And these are American cousins turkeys that run wild throughout all states in USA. Now we're not blessed with that luxury in UK, so for me, next best thing is the pheasant. You can see a beautiful cock pheasant, and again, if you can acquire some, you can rustle them up into some beautiful meals. Now they don't originate in the UK, they are a non-native species, and they come from Asia and the rainforests in particular. They're brought in by Romans in the 11th century. And they're a well-established popular game bird and they're reared by gamekeepers for shoots here in UK. Here's an M pheasant. It's worth noting that legally you can't shoot game on a Sunday in the UK. That's any wildfowl or any game such as pheasants and hares. So I'm out targeting the pheasants or British turkey. Yeah, it's just a bit of light humour, really. And a feed station is sure to attract him in. I'm here because I want a couple foot pot. I've got some nice dishes that I want to rustle up. And hopefully, I might get an opportunity to one or two squirrels, even though it's still a little bit early in the area. And uh, there's a lot of beach mast in this area still. Surprisingly, the first visit were a rabbit, but you'll see me shoot rabbits in this area before. Uh, and there is a few around. Now my rabbit stocks are running a bit low in freezer as well. It's been making sure you eat everything up ready for refilling. So a nice bonus to get this rabbit in bag. Here's the same footage and I've just slowed it down for you. A lovely clinical shot. Dropped it on spot, thrashed about for a few seconds and it was all over. Now this were just after first light, 
you'll be able to see the image is a bit grainy. That's why I've showed you in black and white and the colour version. Night rabbits are abundant in the UK. Uh, they can get decimated sometimes by a mixer or hemorrhaging disease. Again, they're not native. They were brought here by Normans and they were brought here as a food source. They're quite abundant. Even though we lose some to disease now and again, usually recover after a couple of years. And there he is, a male buck rabbit, three quarters grown, perfect for pot. Again, rabbits are delicious meat. And let's show our quarry as ultimate respect. If we're going to take the life, I'm going to uh, be pest managers, then we need to be utilising every part of this rabbit and respecting it fully. So here we go, this is what we're looking for, this is what I've come out for. Nice clinical shot. If you are going to be taking pheasants or larger quarry, it's got to be headshots only. You'll probably get away with a clinical neck shot, breaking spinal cord. But with larger quarry like this, or tough quarry like squiddles, it's got to be an headshot for you main dispatch. I've left this piece of footage in, you can see, it was struck cleanly in the head, it went straight down, it were all over, but then inhibitions kicked in, nerves are firing off through this pheasant's body, and its last instinct is to run, so as the brain shuts down, it still sends a few signals out, and eventually, when them neurons slow down, the body will actually realise it's dead, and then it will come to rest. As I said before, the nerves and the thrashing of art, that's normal. The bird was killed humanely, and it's just body shutting down. There were a few more pheasants in the area, but they were being reluctant to come to where I needed to to shoot them, so I decided to do a quick pickup. I picked up my rabbit, I weeded it out, made sure there were no urine left in its bladder. So when body relaxes, what happens is it'll leak all over your bag. Pick pheasant up, pull them out of way, and then hopefully I'll get some more visitors. I'm shooting in lovely surroundings, and here's a few still images of various locations on this permission. It's an absolutely beautiful place in a stunning part of the country, and I'm truly blessed to be able to shoot here. Now we're back to pheasants' natural habitat. It's an unusual one to think that they come from jungles or rainforests in Asia. But if you think of UK climate, it's quite temperate. So we have hot weather, we have a lot of wet weather. Very similar to a rainforest environment. These pheasants come in all different varieties from these areas. And you'll see them mixed, mixed varieties on different locations throughout UK. So they've adapted well to our climate and they thrive in big numbers. Here we go, another visitor looking for that perfect headshot again. Another clean dispatch and you can usually tell it's a good headshot when you see that neck movement they try and lift their head up but there's nothing there. Here's another slow-mo for you.
So my morning's been successful. That's two British turkeys to be taking home. I've got some wonderful ideas how to cook these up and it's some nice fresh wild meat for the freezer. It's a shame we don't have natural turkeys or native turkeys. It'd be perfect if we could go out and source his own Christmas dinner. Now pheasants are preyed on by humans and all host of different species. And here's some former hawk took it into a nice meal. And that brought my session to a close really. I went out, I was successful. I only wanted a couple for freezer. Like I say, it's too early for squirrels. All that floor where I am there and up towards field margin is absolutely carpeted with beech mast. I have seen them grab it beach by stuff floor and they're digging it digging holes and burying it and uh, storing caches for winter I reckon sometime in December this feed will start proving productive here's my end bag two end pheasants nice rabbit these are all home now prepared in freezer ready to get cooked up Dog knows when I come home, there's a boot full of goodies. And he jumped straight in and had a good sniff. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. And I'll see you in the next video.